Greetings, unsettled souls, and a welcome to the correct views. Sam I.B. DeGangie reporting for the Media Speaks, and it is that time. It is time for the Dunce Camp of the Month Award, a perhaps arguably the funniest, maybe the funniest show on the web. I don't know, at least maybe the funniest of uh, true stories on the web. How's that? Uh, once again, reporting for the Media Speaks, got a full roster of the dumbest people extant today. I mean, above and beyond anything you've ever seen. We're going to start with Reason.com and stay all the way to the end because they get funnier and funnier. And the winner of this month is going to be funny. Do not miss the end of this show. Reason.com. Oh, yes. Wonderful. Thank you, Christelle. In joyless nanny state called America, government prohibits sledding. Now, this is interesting because uh, many of you know I'm recovering from a bruised rib that I sustained while uh, confusing snow with ice, so to speak. And you know what? I hurt myself. You don't sue anybody. Nobody gets sued. You went down the hill. Christelle, when I gracefully went down that hill and, you know, uh, did I ever want to sue anybody? No, not at any point. Never. All right. Don't have too much fun. <laughs> In fact, don't have any fun. You could hurt yourself. That's the thinking of all too many government entities these days, it says, and it's why local officials are increasingly likely to shut down the neighborhood sledding hill. According to the Associated Press, sledding prohibitions are more and more common. No one tracks how many cities have banned or limit sledding, but the list grows every year. One of the latest in Dubak, Iowa, where the city council is moving ahead with a plan to ban sledding in all but two of its 50 parks. We have all kinds of kids that have hills, on, all kinds of parks, excuse me, that have hills on them, said Murray Ware, Dubak's leisure services manager. We can't manage the risk in all of those places. Whatever happened to it being up to the parents and the kid? I mean, I've taken some nasty spills in my, my life. Many of them, uh, including a mild concussion, was prior to me being the age of 18. Um, been hurt on other people's half pipes. Never once sued any of the people that owned the half pipe. It never crossed anybody's mind. It's ridiculous. In the bureaucrats' defense, government is not solely responsible for all the fun killing. When kids get hurt, some parents sue. And these ability concerns have made it too costly for local authorities to run the risk. So rather than change the ridiculous um, law to the point where anybody who twists their ankle walking down the sidewalk can sue, instead of changing what is a ridiculous law, we get rid of arguably one of the oldest uh, pastimes in civilized man. There are cave dwellings of them uh, sledding. And uh, I've always said if you had a time machine, you could make a million dollars in any time period, so long as they were able to use wood and steel, you would create a uh, snowboard and you'd be rich. Uh, this is Infowars.com, moving on to another dumb D. Video, man arrested for assaulting a licensed concealed carry holder inside Walmart. Alan Salazar. A Florida man, it says, was arrested and charged with assault Tuesday after he blindsided a legally armed Walmart shopper. The Harrisburg County Sheriff's Office says 43-year-old Michael Foster spotted Clarence Daniels, 62, with a holstered gun in the parking lot of a Walmart store. Newly released footage shows Foster following Daniels inside the store where he grabbed the shopper by the neck, threw him on the floor, and placed him in a chokehold. <laughs> While grappling on the ground in full view of the customers, Foster reportedly shouted that Daniels possessed a gun. While Daniels unsuccessfully tried to tell Foster that he had a permit for his handgun. That's great, because we all know that active shooters, and that'll be important later, active shooters always carry their gun in their holster and walk around the store. When police arrived, they discovered that Daniels was indeed a lawful concealed carry permit holder and proceeded to arrest Foster for battery. At least one witness who saw the clash unfold agreed that Foster should have been arrested. He doesn't even know who the victim is, Walmart shopper. That'd be, I would hate to be known as a Walmart shopper. This woman just got schlacked. Uh, the worst thing. Don't ever put that on my epitaph. Walmart shopper, poor woman, Man, Menton Samuels, whose name is forever tainted, 
Toad Fox Tampa Bay, but he just goes and attacks the man and throws him to the ground, neck locked him, you know, for what? Why? What did the man do? So, uh, way to go there, um, Foster. Way to go uh, taking down a man who was shopping and bothering no one. But you are not the dumbest of the month. No, they get dumber. This is also Alan Salazar. Irony. 1,700 private jets descend on Davos Economic Forum to discuss climate change. Now, if you, for some reason, uh, don't know what I'm talking about here, jets use a massive amount of fuel, and they leave a rather significant amount of exhaust behind. They are taking 1,700 private jets, because they're too good to uh, fly in the tin cans that you and I go in. Private jets, 1,700 of them, leaving more carbon behind than the birth of a star to stop carbon from warming the planet. And for those of you that don't know, man-made global warming is a lie. Kyle put a house beat behind it once. You should too. Um, look up Climate Gate. Look up Lord Moncton. Look up uh, all the information that's on there. I suggest Climate Gate. Uh, searching that first. World leaders are traveling to this year's Davis Economic Forum in Switzerland. All the way to Switzerland will reportedly board about 1,700 private jet flights to each their destination to reach, excuse me, where ironically the topic of how to tackle climate change denial will be discussed. The annual globalist confab of power brokers, economists, journalists, world leaders, pop stars, what would you do without the great mind of Rihanna, and titans of industry meets through Friday to flesh out various issues they believe to be affecting the planet. In other words, you will sign you to our label, but you also have to agree that you're going to talk about global warming because we own those industries too. Otherwise, you don't get a record deal. One of the items on the agenda, how can we tackle climate change denial? Denial, as if uh, climate gate never happened. A problem threatening the implementation of a carbon tax scheme that they've had long in the works. That's one of the reasons I think that we need to departé the UN. Oblivious to the irony, forum attendees from all over the world book tens of hundreds of flights into Geneva, collectively spending hours polluting the airways. Roughly 1,700 private jets are expected over the course of the week, which is twice as many as normal, according to WING. X Advance, a tracking firm, CNN Money reports. A June 2014 Institute for Policy Studies report entitled High Flyers, How Private Jet Travel is Straining the System, Warming the Planet, Warming the Planet and Costing You Money, revealed an hour of flying in a private jet burns as much fuel as an entire year of driving. So one hour, every hour they're in flight is as much as you and I are burning in a year driving a car. And they're going there to talk about how to get people to believe that the planet is warming based on carbon, which they're putting there in greater amounts than you and I are. That friend says it all. Make sure you go and look, uh, look this up. There's, uh, the article goes on and on. But suffice to say, it's ridiculous. It says, uh, I do got to read this, scientists at the Indian Science Congress, for example, recently expressed concerns that man-made global warming was being blown way out of proportion, pointing out that polar ice caps were melting before humans were even on Earth. While I agree that, while I agree that glaciers are melting because of global warming, if this is because of man, then what was the reason for the melting of the glaciers in the Gondwana period long before man arrived on the planet? And it goes on and on and on. That's why they made the show, but they didn't win the hat. No, we get dumber. Students accused of racism after chanting USA at a high school basketball game. They were in America. So now chanting USA, USA means that you are racist. Uh, Mikhail Phelan always gives us good dumdies. High school students from Idlow, Texas, were accused of racism Tuesday after chanting USA, USA, you get it, at a girls' basketball game in nearby Slanton. We all know about those uh, racist women basketball high schoolers. You hear about them every day. Fans at the Idlow Wildcats, who reportedly began the, the chant after the Slanton Taggers were defeated, were labeled a racist due to Slanton, St Staten, excuse me, 
school district's large Hispanic population. Speaking with Fox 34 News, Slayton Superintendent Julie Becker argued that the chant was used as a divisive and offensive manner. Yeah, chanting for your your country, your USA, like we've that's that you're racist because, well, I guess the USA is just racist to love itself. You know, if, if somebody in Canada sings, "Hey Canada, I love Canada," well, yeah, but if you love the USA, you're a racist. Doesn't make any sense. I had Lewis Superintendent Jim Waller, who you should call and say uh, it was mentioned in the Dunce Cap of the Month award show, immediately responded to the accusation with a written and verbal apology, ordering his district to discontinue all chanting due to the perception that it creates. So they have now outlawed chanting. Uh, soon, uh, that'll be used for religious purposes more. <laughs> I apologize to Slayton ISD and the chanting will not be allowed to continue at games because of the perception that it creates, dumbass Waller said. We understand competitiveness and school excitement and support, but we mean to be supportive in our words to our team and not use words that could be in interpreted as insensitive. Maybe we need to teach the people that are so sensitive not to be so damn sensitive, but no. That would make sense. And if they had done that, then they wouldn't be on the Dunce Cap of the Month award show. Um, friends, I want to... Uh, I, I, I do not leave. You will not want to miss the end. The last Dum D is amazing, so stay with me. But I uh, have to pay the bills, and I have to give a shout-out to uh, people that I'm proud to have supporting the show. One of them would be Mike McLaughlin, one of the most awesome writers extant today. If you got a chance, go to Facebook.com, look up Mike McLaughlin, tell him you heard about it from the correct views. Uh, and the last and the last of the sponsors, I want to thank, greatly thank, uh, anytime you're stranded somewhere, you'll know why, change transportation. If you're anywhere within, I'd say, about 50 to 100 miles of Canton, Ohio, look up change transportation. They do price matching. So no matter what deal you get, they will either match it or let you take the other cab. They will beat the price, so make sure you call them. Uh, Reuters.com, Saudi cleric condemns snowman as anti-Islamic. Now, friends, if I could afford to send dunce caps, if I ever get sponsored to the degree that I hope to, and I could ever make this a, 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 a show to where I can afford to send out dunce caps uh, to other countries, this would have gotten it. And this costs like 30, 50 bucks to send out as it is. A prominent Saudi Arabian cleric has whipped up controversy by issuing a religious ruling forbidding the building of snowmen, described as anti-Islamic. You heard it here first, friends, on the correct views. Asked on a religious website if it was permissible for fathers to build snowmen for their children after a snowstorm in the country's south, Sheikh Mohammed Salih al-Mujad replied ever so brilliantly, It is not permitted to make a statue out of snow, even by way of play and fun. Hey, I wonder if they ban sledding, too. I mean, they can get along with those other joyless swines I reported on earlier. Quoting from Muslim scholars, Sheikh Munajad argued that to build a snowman was to create an image of a human being, an action considered sinful under the kingdom's strict interpretation of Sunni Islam. Why do people not want Islam in their country? Why? Why? Because we fear that this is the direction that's going to go in. We're not worried about average Joe Islamist any more than they're worried about average Joe Christian. It's these nutcases that we worry about. So what if you made a snow cat? Is it legal to make a snow cat? God has given people space to make whatever they want, which does not have a soul, including trees, ships, fruits, buildings, and so on. So man builds fruits? He wrote in his ruling, that provoked swift responses from Twitter users writing in Arabic and identifying themselves with Arab names. They are afraid for their faith of everything. Sick minds, one Twitter user wrote. Another posted a photo of a man in formal Arab garb holding an arm of a snow bride wearing a bra and lipstick. The reason for the ban is fear of sedition, he wrote. So even other Islamists are writing about it. Um, 
the anti-Islamic snowman. Does it get stupider? Of course it does. We got a couple stories left before we get to the, the dumbest one ever. Um, school forces elementary students to pull down pants for poop inspection. Prison planet. This this shows that these people do not have foresight that goes beyond the tip of their nose. To do this, even if you were not humiliating the child, is obviously a breach on so many fronts that this sat in my head as a real candidate for the dunce cap of the month, friends. Administrators at a public school in Texas are investigating why more than 200 elementary school students were lined up and 20, excuse me, were contacts, I got new contacts, were lined up and forced to drop their drawers in an unorthodox examination that many parents say went too far. Well, I would say so. 20 kids pulling their pants down in front of an adult because one of them may have crapped is a bit much. On Monday, several school children reported being divided into male and female groups at a school in the small North Texas town of Gustine, where they were ordered to enter separate rooms and expose their underwear for poop inspections. The school's justification, you might ask, or faculty members had been finding poop on the gym floor, according to WFAA. So, of course, the best way to handle this if you are a brilliant teacher is to have kids line up and pull their pants down. I said I didn't want to, but I was told that I had to because all the kids had to, recalled the now traumatized 11-year-old Eliza Medina. I felt uncomfortable and I didn't want to do it, the young student claimed. I felt like they violated my privacy. Even at 11, they're smart enough to know this. Medina's mother, Maria, says she was angered, I would hope, when she learned that teachers told kids to pull their pants down to check them if they could find anything. I was furious, I mean I was furious, the outraged mother said. If you can do if you can't do your job or you don't know what you're doing, you need to be fired. You shouldn't be there. The Gustine Intendant School District Superintendent, Ken Bow, now you know who to call and let them know you heard about how their stupidity here, reportedly condemned the school's invasive search for the serial pooper, I bet. It's not that's not appropriate. And we don't condone that, so you would take disciplinary action, Bo said. However, the superintendent also said he was under the impression that the kids only had been asked to lower their pants a little. Well, that makes it great. It says they had to pull them down all the way to where the butt is, according to the little girl. So there you go, and the sheer brilliance. There's two stories left. This here is the runner-up Dumb D winner. This is the one that wouldn't have won if the one after this wasn't even beyond the pale stupid. 11-year-old asks public safety officer what a taser feels like, so he tases him. This is the Free Thought Project. The reason that I didn't choose this was because I would have sent a dunce cap to the police officer, and I would have sent a dunce cap to the 11-year-old that asked to be tased. An 11-year-old... At 11 years old, I was not that stupid. I'm sorry, I simply wasn't. I hate when people say that. When were you like when you were? I was not stupid enough to ask to be shocked with an electrical device on the side officer, a police officer. Janelle Alaska, an Alaskan public safety officer, reportedly shocked an 11 year old boy with a taser because he was asking about the device. According to the boy's mother, he was tased by the officer. After asking him what it felt like to get shocked, the officer then apparently gave the boy a live demonstration, hitting him in the arm with the barbs of the taser. Well, they do it to the cops when they're trained. They are talking about being tased, and my son did ask what it would be like, the boy's mother, Terry Ward, Janelle Empire newspaper reported. Public safety officers are basically cops in every way, aside from the fact that they are not sworn in and they are not allowed to carry firearms while on duty. Public safety officers are used by police departments to patrol remote areas that they can't afford to staff with better paid officers. Alaska's public safety spokeswoman Megan Peters told reporters that investigators were working to determine whether a crime was committed or whether it was an administrative matter for the tribal government. You know what? I must say they, they, both, they both should have gotten the dumb D, but no, this is what won 
because there is nothing that I have seen all month dumber than this. We even got our dumdy theme music ready to go here. Oh, listen to this. Oh, yes. So why would that be? Mikael Phelan finds me the dunce cap of the month award winner once again. Mikael Phelan, you are the absolute best at finding these. All right, guys. Are you ready? Are you ready? I hope so because we're doing it. Let me get these uh, screens set up here where I can get to both of these at once. Middle school students advised to throw canned food at active shooters. An active shooter is a person that enters your child's classroom with a gun, many times an AK-47 or something like it. Middle school students in Alabama are being advised to stash canned food throughout their classrooms to be used as a weapon against possible intruders. Well, we see, Christelle and I managed to find an armed shooter, so we're going to see if it works. He's still standing, isn't he? Uh-huh. Uh, we'll see if it keeps going on. W.F. Burns Middle School student, or Middle School Principal Priscilla Holly, who wins the Dunce Cap of the Month Award, sent a letter home to parents last week, announced the new safety procedure after discussing the issue with law enforcement. Speaking with WHNT19, Holly said the policy was modeled after a survival tactic known as ALICE, an acronym for Alert, Lockdown, Inform, Counter, and Evacuate. As in Alice in Wonderland, this wouldn't even work there. What is, is the lockdown or the counter, the throwing of the, oh, damn it, the throwing of the cans for self-defense? Ah! Did he fall? Uh, wobbled. Warning, warning that there's more soup to be had. Um, while I get through this story, as a result of school shootings throughout the United States and discussing with law enforcement the best procedure to follow to keep our students safe. We are enhancing our procedure for intruders, Holly stated. Listen to that whole sentence. First of all, that is the best procedure to follow to keep students safe. Not to bring in a private security company, not to arm the responsible teachers who would be properly trained to do such things. No, this is their best procedure. What was their worst? And that is, an that is an enhancement of their policies, friends. An enhancement. According to the letter, somehow she said this with a straight face. According to the letter, students are encouraged to empower themselves by bringing an 8-ounce canned food item from the home. I, I, I don't know if this is 8 ounces. Is this, this, is, is this 8 ounces? This is 10 ounces. This should really do the trick. I got it. That, He's still coming. He's limping. This is going to work. Maybe I shouldn't have given it to her. I think this is going to work. Um, the, the canned food item could stun the intruder. Is he stunned? Uh, it says here it could st stun the intruder or even knock him out until police arrive. That's what the letter says. He's still walking. The canned food item would give the students a sense of empowerment to protect themselves and will make them feel secure in case the intruder enters the classroom. Christelle, are you feeling secure? Not really. What? Not even now, no. Ah! He, it might be working. It, it might be working. Let me see what else she says here. Where did you hit him? I, I, wow, well, I can't say it on air. Student of Chambers County Schools, Dr. Kelly Hodge, claimed that getting children evacuated, not throwing cans of green beans, was the main point of the policy shift. That was green beans. You can't... That, that's all I got. Not throwing green beans. Oh. Did I get him? I, 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 I bet you he's down now. You might have fractured a rib. I, that, I've done that hurts. Reactions to the plan have reportedly been mixed, with many on Facebook calling the private the policy dangerous and stupid. Never bring a can of food to a gunfight, one commenter, must have been a dummy, said. Others applauded the school for at least encouraging children to fight back. This is considered fighting back. 
Have you ever been hit with a can of peas? It hurts. So this was the last resort. Might help if they got hit enough times. So in other words, he's shooting bullets and the kids are throwing cans of food. A Walmart helmet and a, a, a thick coat will protect you from this. Many commenters voiced their belief that having an armed school staff would be the best way to defend students. No. Regardless, the new policy is a step up from the usual anti-self-defense rhetoric often passed down by the federal government. Reports over the years have suggested everything from urinating on oneself to playing dead in order to confront an attacker. Now, I'm going to go ahead real quick here and read what the award is. But see, Christelle, I've got the ultimate weapon. This is 46 oh, no. full ounces. This is like the canned cannon. Perfect. All right, so let me read to you real quick exactly. Oh, that worked. That was perfect. The Dunce Cap of the Month Award. This certificate awards W.F. Burns Middle School Principal Priscilla Holly, who caused this pain, this month's Dunce Cap of the Month Award for what is, hopefully, I wrote, the single dumbest idea in the whole history of education. While many parents fret what could happen during an active shooter nightmare, you dolts at W.F. Burns somehow with a straight face suggested that children stashed canned food as a form of self-defense. This causes one to wonder if anyone at that school has ever read the Bill of Rights, and if so, then why can the staff not be legally armed? Is the staff afraid of itself? Rather than arm the staff and teach responsible guns, law slash safety, I said, you suggested soup cans. We weep for the future that is taught such total nonsense. I don't know if you can tell it, especially on low def, you probably can't. High def, that is uh, Campbell's soup uh, cans that are behind it. And uh, Christelle's first ever collage hat. Now, keep in mind, if you're new to the show, both this certificate and this hat are being mailed to our, th this wonderful, wonderful, brilliant staff here. Look at this. There's some giant evil ravioli. Oh no, ravioli, I'm scared. Campbell's tomato soup, oh yeah. That's the dunce cap, they're getting mailed it. And friends, that is the dunce cap of the month award show. Thank you for listening. Please subscribe if you haven't. Good night, God bless. I think you knocked him out.